Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Chinin Cho from Harvard. This is the talk about our project on quantum meets the minimum circuit size problem. And this is a joint work with uh, Nai Hui, Jia Yu, and Reza. So this uh, work is about studying quantum computation and complexity through the lens of meta complexity. So you might ask what's meta complexity. In short, it is the complexity of complexity. So we're trying to study the quantum computation complexity through the uh, lens of complexity of complexity. And to be more formal, let me first uh, start with uh, what's uh, the concrete definition of meta complexity, especially let's start from the classical setting. So meta complexity study the complexity of computational problems about complexity. So what do I really mean? So maybe the most uh, like a familiar complexity measure for people is the circuit complexity. It is like I given you maybe a Boolean function. I ask you about like uh, what's the size of a, the smallest size of a circuit that can compute uh, this Boolean function. And this corresponding problem is exactly called the minimum circuit size problem. And there can also be other complexity measure like Komogorov complexity. Basically, then this is asking something like related to like Turing machine. And for today, uh, our focus will be on the circuit complexity size, namely the minimum circuit size problem. And uh, let me start with formally define uh, what's a minimum circuit size problem. So to minimum circuit size problem MCSP, the input is a truth table of n bit uh, Boolean function and the size parameter S. And the output will be yes, if there is X a circuit of size at most S for this uh, Boolean function F. Otherwise we will require to ask uh, output no. So note that the input length here actually is two to the N and sometimes people denote it as capital N so that we can basically allow like running time to be like a poly two to the N which is like two to the O N. And, as, and the first observation is that actually we can show MCSP is in uh, NP. And the reason is very simple as follows. So the input is the truth table of the, your Boolean function, which is of length two to the N. And the witness uh, for the input will then be uh, circuits of size at most S for this uh, truth table. And the verifier can simply like uh, run through all the possible inputs and check bit by bit on the truth table and verify whether this is circuits indeed compute our Boolean function. And note that the running time basically is like big, big O two to the N times S, which is poly uh, two to the N time, which is like polynomial over this length of the input. So this is saying that uh, MCSP is indeed in NP. But surprisingly, uh, this probably is the uh, best uh, unconditional result, uh, like uh, like people have uh, known, like the easiest unconditional. Like, and if you want to show MCSP is in P or MCSP is NP hard, it seems uh, it turns out to be uh, like uh, surprisingly uh, difficult. And lots of evidence have shown that to either show MCSP is in P or showing MCSP is NP hard through some standard techniques actually will result in some surprising complexity results. So this is saying that this should be uh, not expected to be easily solved. Moreover, maybe even more surprisingly, there is even a conjecture called a uh, purple uh, conjecture. This is saying that the best uh, conjecture, conjecturing that the best way to solve NCSP actually is by brute force. And this is indeed actually the current uh, best algorithm. Uh, no one have yet come up with an uh, algorithm better than brute forcing algorithm to solve NCSP. Okay, so, so far we have uh, introduced this uh, MCSP as an example of a classical meta complexity, but you may ask why care, like why NCSP is important? So it turns out that MCSP is uh, somehow is like in the center of a complexity theory. It has lots of connection to other subfields. For example, circuit complexity. People have shown that if you can have some upper bound for MCS, MCSP, it will imply some uh, surprising circuit sort of bound. And also it has connection to learning theory. 
connection to average case, uh, average case uh, complexity and cryptography. So here I won't uh, dig into the details uh, or it, of uh, all connections because uh, they, it, they themselves, each like, uh, is uh, very interesting on its own. And the point here is just want to tell, to convince you that NCSP, at least in the classical setting, indeed like uh, is a central object in the complexity theory. It has so many connections to all other fields. And it is, is exactly because of this importance of NCSP in the classical complexity theory. It motivates us to think about like uh, what will happen when quantum meets NCSP. So in the rest of the talk, I'm going to start with some basic definition and results about like uh, how to define uh, MCSP in a quantum setting properly. And then I'll go with uh, like a bird eye view on our result. Actually, we showed lots of uh, like interesting property about the NCSP in the quantum setting, but we don't have time to go over all of them in this uh, short talk. So I'll just first give you a bird eye view on the results. And then I'll like uh, use some highlights to tell you about some special properties that only appear in a quantum setting. That is quite interesting. And then I'll summary, uh, like, uh, like summarize the talk and give some future directions and open problem. So definitions and basic uh, complexity results. So um, maybe let's first uh, go back a little, take a step back, think about like what kind of computational uh, problems like in the quantum world are we studying? So in the classical setting, we talk about a uh, Boolean function, but it turns out that in the quantum setting, the most natural uh, computational problem actually is like unitary transformation. And uh, in short, like for quantum circuits, it computes naturally compute the unitary transformation by like applying lots of quantum gates and then altogether compute the unitary transformation on their inputs. And usually people will divide it into two, two parts. Yeah, there are input qubits indeed like uh, fed by x1 to xn. They are like a zero one variables. And uh, there's also ancilla qubits, which is like O0. And for people who are not very familiar with uh, quantum theory, the introduction of ancilla qubits is exactly because uh, unitary, like quantum computation is uh, reversible. So if you don't allow like extra qubits, actually the uh, computational space in your quantum circuit is limited. So basically you can think of ancilla qubits as some extra register you can play around with. So given this kind of quantum uh, circuit setting, there are actually three natural types of computation problems we can, we can talk about. So first, maybe it's our favorite Boolean function, but uh, Given that a uh, Boolean function is actually, I mean, the quantum circuit is not naturally computing Boolean function. So the way we say a quantum circuit compute Boolean function is actually talking about, we measure one of the output bits and with a loss of generality, we can think it is the first bit. And we use whether this uh, first uh, bit, uh, the marginal probability is greater, is, is being one with like a higher probability or being zero with higher probability to decide uh, whether we, we, we think of the output is zero or one. And then uh, quantum circuits also naturally computes quantum state in the sense that we think of now the input qubit is always fixed to zero. So there's actually no input. And uh, under like this computation of the circuits, it naturally computes a gate, a state, quantum state. And this quantum circuit is, is corresponding to the computation for this quantum state. So you can also think of this as a preparation problem. The goal is to prepare a quantum state by uh, applying some quantum circuits on O0 input state. And finally, yeah, unitary transformation, which is the, the most natural way to like let quantum circuits to compute things. So to properly uh, define the corresponding NCSP, we need to, I mean, be more specific and uh, talk about lots of things about the handle, the error probability and the distance between state, et cetera. So it's a little bit messy. And uh, for the sake of time, uh, I'll start with just talking about the, the, the Boolean function definition. And for the rest, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll postpone it to like let you read the paper on your own. 
So for the Boolean function version, we call it the minimum quantum circuit size problem, uh, abbreviated as MQCSP. And just to remind you that when we say a quantum circuit compute Boolean function, we think about like uh, measuring the first output bit. So in this problem, we all have several parameters. First is the number of ancilla qubits, and also the completeness parameter and the soundness parameter alpha and beta respectively. The uh, input to the uh, uh, MQCSP problem, because this is uh, for like a Boolean function. So the input is also truth table of n bit uh, Boolean function, as well as the size parameter S. And the goal now is become slightly different from the, uh, the critical setting because there are some like a randomness like a, in the quantum computation, the quantum circuits. So the goal now becomes to distinguish the yes case where there exists a circuit of size at mode s, such that for every input, the quantum circuits computed with like a, like a alpha, like a goodness, meaning that the uh, result of the, the Boolean function should be like uh, after you evaluate with uh, the circuits on the input, they have this, uh, they are, the closeness is greater than alpha. So this basically is is like uh, measuring the probability, the marginal probability of the first uh, output bit to be the value of f of x. And the no case is saying that for any circuit of size s, there exists a bad uh, input x, such that uh, the probability of the fx equals to the uh, margin, I mean, the, the output uh, of the first bit of the quantum circuit is as small beta. So alpha and beta, you should think of it as the probability of like whether the first bit output of the quantum circuit is equals to our uh, Boolean function f of x. So notice that this is uh, already slightly different from the classical setting. This becomes a promise problem because it could be the case that uh, there is something going on in the middle and we ignore those situations. And somehow uh, this is uh, really necessary if you, if you want to make the uh, connection to other problems and et cetera to work. Yeah, this kind of uh, promise setting is, in, is necessary. And this also cause some uh, like a slightly annoying technical details to handle. Yeah, but uh, as a starter, you can always think about uh, maybe alpha and beta, beta like being like some, some favorite parameter you like, say like a two third and one third, and red, instead of thinking of it as a free parameter. But uh, just a warning that when you read our paper, actually alpha and beta actually kind of subtle in matters at some point. Okay, so hope now you have a, a rough idea on like uh, the definition of MQCSP. So I'll start with uh, explaining some of the basic complexity result we prove. So first we show an upper bound for MQCSP in QCMA, which is the uh, like the quantum version of the uh, like the NP, but now it's like the proof is like classical and you have a quantum verifier. So what uh, this QCMA uh, algorithm for MQCSP? So basically the prover uh, can sense the witness being the classical descri description of a quantum circuit of size S, and most S uh, to the verifier. And because the quantum verifier has the quantum power to simulate the, the quantum circuits, so it actually can do exactly the same things as the, like the previous uh, MP proof for the classical MCSP. And yeah, with similar argument, you can show that uh, you just need point number time. Yeah, but you can also see that we really need the, the quantum power, yeah, in the verifier part so that you can evaluate and, and verify. So it is unclear whether people can like put MQCSP in MP or not. Yeah, it could be an interesting problem to study. And on the lower bound sites, uh, we quantize some uh, classical result. So first, for in terms of unconditional lower bound, we quantize the recent seminal results, which show like a multi-output MQCSP, uh, MCSP's MP hard 
And we similarly show the out multiple output version of MQCSP is also NP hot. So here I, I won't define what a multi output is. It is, uh, I mean, it is uh, a little bit annoyed to formally define it, but uh, also not, I mean, the definition also won't be too surprising. So I encourage you to read our paper if you're interested in. And in terms of conditional uh, lower bounds, we showed some uh, like a result actually by just also like quantized uh, classical results. And by conditional lower bound, I mean uh, like uh, if you, something like if you assume uh, MQCSP is in BQP and then you are sure like uh, one function doesn't exist, something like this. Okay, so now I hope uh, 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 I convince you the uh, definition of MQCSP is uh, valid, like it is natural. And also we can uh, like uh, show lots of basic results. So next I'm going to give you a bird eye view on the OD results we have. So this is a table uh, of all the uh, connections and results we have for like three different versions of NCSP uh in in the uh, content setting so the first category is the mqcsp i introduced earlier and there are two versions of mcsp i won't define uh, right now this is for the unitary version and this is for, for the content state version yeah and to let you uh have a feeling i mean for bird eye feeling yeah the different color have a different meaning so for the blue color it means that basically it is a direct extension from the classical and analogous results. And the yellow part is like, uh, oh, there are also similar uh, result in the classical setting. But in order to prove in a quantum setting, we need some uh, extra techniques and uh, tools. And for the red results, there are like some new uh, properties that are only unique in a quantum setting. So what did we prove? Uh, Basically, we uh, quantize uh, lots of the classical results we have seen like in the one slice earlier, uh, showing the connection to cryptography, learning theory, circuit or bound, or even fine grain complexity. And the second, uh, like a big category of our result is some lots of reductions, uh, either among different objects, meaning that uh, among like different versions of uh, MCSP in a quantum setting or there are some special self-reduction and search to decision reductions. And we also show some connections to some other uh, interesting uh, objects called like a pseudo random state, one home value, and succinct state tomography at all. So if this doesn't sound, uh, I mean, doesn't make sense to you, it's okay for now. I'll introduce a sound plan later. But in order to, I mean, if you want to have a better sense on like uh, what we did concretely, I really encourage you to read our paper. And the purpose for this, of this talk is just to give them a very brief overview on how we did. So maybe before I maybe, I will go into like one of few, few of the interesting results later. But before doing that, let me first uh, tell you a little bit about like what's the challenges and difficulties in the quantum setting. Because as we saw in the previous slides, there are actually lots of results are like a quantization of the classical results. But some of the uh, extension actually is not flat, direct, and trivial. And there are three reasons for that, why it is uh, challenging and difficult. First, it's like quantum computation uh, is generally erroneous and random. So uh, this makes the definition of like a MCSP in a quantum setting actually subtle. Like what I mentioned earlier, like we need this, uh, this kind of a promise problem setting. And due to the uh, like inherent randomness, I mean, also like the randomness is not like classical randomness that like you can fix a random string and do lots of the argument. They are like this kind of a content contentness going on, which is not so obvious at first glance, like how can you like uh, generalize the classical techniques to here. But in order to really see that you really need to go through the calculation proof, which I won't do it here, but I encourage you to uh, take a look at our paper if you're interested. 
And the second difficulty actually is about the introduction of ancilla qubits. So this is also a reason why in the earlier definition, I spent some time to explain uh, ancilla qubit a little bit. And the reason is that a different number of ancilla qubits actually could give different circuit complexity. And intuitively, this is because you can imagine if you have more ancilla qubits, your circuits have more register to work on. So potentially, maybe the circuit size can be smaller. In the meantime, the number of ancilla qubits uh, like also will affect the complexity of the MQCSB problem. For example, if the ancilla qubit is like super linear, actually, if you want to do a direct classical simulation of a, uh, the circuits, it becomes like super polynomial time because now the, in the, the, the size of the uh, uh, circuits in terms of the, the size of the state is like super linear. So the running time will be like two to the something super linear, which is super polynomial of two to the n. Yeah, so I hope here uh, I convince you uh, ancilla actually subtle to the quantum version of NCSP. And finally, the third difficulty actually is maybe surprising at first glance. It is the subtlety of the various uh, choice of the quantum gate set. So it turns out that uh, some of the results, we actually only know how to start with uh, proving with some certain gate set rather than all kind of gate set. So in order to generalize to all the gate set, we actually need to invoke these things called solovay kitab theory about like universal approximation. And applying this theory although make everything work, but this also cause some overhead in the circuit complexity, which makes the results a little bit annoying. It's not that uh, looking good in the sense that different cases now have like slightly different uh, parameters and results. So all three types of uh, difficulty, although we basically can handle to some extent, but it also makes the quantum set study of uh, MCSP a little bit different from the classical study. Right, so now I'll move on to uh, talking a little bit about some uh, more like a surprising and interesting results in our, in, our role, in our work. In particular, I'll focus on the quantum state version of the MCSP problem. So previously I only defined the Boolean uh, function version and now let me define the state version and we call it S MCSP, where the first S stands for quantum state. So now the input becomes an arbitrarily many copies of an unqubit state and psi. So the reason we have arbitrary, you can think of it as like, oh, you have an oracle, you can keep querying, it will give you a fresh copy of your quantum state sign. And we also have a size parameter S. And now the goal is to determine if there is a circuit S such that it can prepare this site uh, for you in the sense that uh, the, the circuits evaluate on O0 input is very close to Psi and the product with some uh, identity, meaning that uh, like the first uh, unqubit un un output is very close to Psi after you, you like a, a partial trace the, the other part. So note that maybe the first remark is that here, uh, the definition is directly give you a quantum state, but you can also define a version where now the input is just a classical description of uh, this design. And you want to ask the similar question again. And the second remark is like, uh, yeah, actually, although I didn't define the unitary version, but with similar ideas, you can also define some uh, unitary version by like maybe allowing query to this unitary uh, matrices in, in certain sense. Okay, so now uh, having this uh, definition of uh, SMCSP in mind, we can see some interesting results uh, we have. And the first uh, I want to talk about is some quantum unique reductions. In particular, in our paper, we show some search to decision reduction for both uh, SMCSP and the unitary version, which is called UMCSP. And we also have self-reduction for SMCSP, sorry. And also some gap version of MQCSP, we can show it reduces to UMCSP. 
Okay, so now you might feel a little bit puzzled, but uh, to let you have a feeling about how to interpret results, you can think of that actually like search the two decision reduction and self-reduction are not known for like classical M MCSP. So this kind of a reduction actually is like new and only unique in the quantum setting. And to let you have a little bit of feeling about like uh, why we can expect this kind of uh, reduction in the uh, uh, quantum setting, let me give you a, uh, like a brief explain on the key idea. So the key idea is like, uh, because quantum circuits is like reversible. So we are going to leverage in this kind of a reversibility problem, property. So let me explain to this idea using the search to decision reduction for SNCSP. So just to recall, uh, in SNCSP, the input is a side S and you can think of you have lots of uh, copies of it. And you want to, and for the search problem, you want to find out the circuit C of size and most S that uh, prepare this side for you. And for the decision problem, you have like, uh, you, you can query it with a, a, a quantum state and a size parameter, and it will tell you whether uh, there is six a circuit of less size or not. So now for the search to decision reduction, basically we want to solve the search problem, which means that after I give you a, a, a quantum state psi, uh, I ask you, and with the guarantee that there is a circuit of size S, and I want to, you to give me explicitly a circuit that of size S and prepare this psi. And uh, because this is a social decision reduction, so I also allow you to have a SMCSP or decision oracle for you. So how to make this uh, search to decision reduction work? So the idea is to uh, utilize the reversibility and to guess uh, uh, state, a uh, gate, uh, like gate by gate. So you may start with like uh, the first uh, output uh, qubit and then you guess maybe a uh, gate to be like G1. And then you query the decision oracle by applying the inverse of the quantum gate G1 to your uh, input uh, state psi and uh, let the size parameter to be S minus one. So you know that if uh, G1 is a, is a gate that uh, really leads you to a circuit of size S, yeah, then this uh, G1 inverse psi should have a circuit of size S minus one. So the SMCSP should tell you yes. But if it tell you no, it also means that this G1 uh, probably wouldn't work. So you maybe want to try another G1 and here I did know maybe blue. And if now the decision oracle uh, tell you yes, it means that, oh, so if I keep uh, continuing with uh, G1, uh, later on I should be able to come up with uh, something of size S minus one for a G1 inverse psi. So together I will have a circuit of size S for our original state uh, psi. So I can keep continuing doing this to guess G2 from our gate set and then invert uh, in, uh, reverse it and then query the SMCSP decision oracle again. And it is yes, I can do a G3 and no, I mean, I just uh, try another one, etc. So I can keep going on and going on. And I hope this uh, animation convinces you a little bit on this uh, probably should work. And as a short remark, actually, this is slightly oversimplified. In order to really make it work, uh, we need to like consider some error parameters, etc. But uh, in a very high level, this is the rough idea. And uh, in our paper, you can see how we make it make every detail work. But uh, I want to conclude this slide actually with an open problem. So actually, even though we establish like uh, this kind of, I, I mean, either self to decision reductions or self reductions to like the quantum version of NCSP, but we don't yet know like what's the applications of that. And intuitively, I mean, it's some new properties that uh, in a classical setting uh, won't have. Yeah, it will be really interesting to see if uh, people can find some applications of this kind of quantum unique reductions. So beyond this uh, quantum unique reductions, yeah, uh, for other uh, for for the quantum version of SSP, 
there are also some other interesting applications that's very unique to quantum. For example, one can use uh, the state version SMCSP to break pseudo random state and quantum uh, one way function. So here I won't really define what does those two mean. Uh, I encourage you to read some uh, relevant uh, uh, part in our paper if you're interested in, but you can think of them as some interesting quantum primitive in the study of quantum complexity, quantum cryptography, etc. And uh, there are second uh, interesting uh, result I want to share in this talk is that we also establish some kind of a weak equivalent between uh, like solving SMCSP and estimating the wormhole value under some like common assumptions and conjectures. And to see like uh, what's the connection, yeah. Like uh, basically the connection is the following, the volume of a wormhole, although I didn't, I won't define what's wormhole here, under some uh, uh, like a conjecture called a volume com equals to complexity conjecture by physicist uh, Lena Saskin. Yeah, it is conjecture that the volume will be equals to uh, roughly the same as the circuit complexity of a thermal, uh, thermal field double state. And then uh, under like assuming there's a correspondence between like gravitational theory and the quantum theory called ADS-CFT. If we assume this uh, connection is kind of efficiently computable, then we can show that we can use SMCSP to like kind of uh, solve the complexity of the thermal double state. And hence understanding the estimate can be able to estimate the volume of a wormhole. And in the other direction, if you can, uh, if you are able to estimate the volume of a wormhole, we also show that for certain subclass of SMCSP, meaning that now the state is some uh, state that will appear in the quantum theory, the quantum CFT theory, this kind of uh, SMCSP will then be solvable. So that's why I'm told, I, I, I said this is like a weak equivalent because uh, uh, even you can estimating uh, the volume of one hole doesn't mean that you can solve the SNSP for arbitrary state because those quantum state might not really happen in the, the physical reality. Okay, so I hope so far I give you, uh, I convince you that uh, there are something interesting going on, like the quantum version of the uh, NCSP problem indeed has some unique property and can connect it to lots of uh, different stuff. So now a uh, summary and some future directions. So in this work, uh, we basically have a three-step program to study like uh, when quantum meets uh, MCSP problem. So we start with uh, defining uh, the MCSP for the Boolean functions in the quantum setting and uh, study some basic property and uh, reproduce uh, lots of connections to different uh, subfields in the theoretical CS. And then we move on to study the uh, minimum quantum circuits problem for quantum objects like quantum state and uh, unitary transformation. And then we also talk about something I uh, completely skipped uh, in, the, in the talk. Yeah, it is like uh, using quantum algorithm and quantum reductions to study uh, the quantum version of MCSP or even the classical versions. So there are also some interesting results there. So for all of them, uh, I all, only gave a very, very uh, surface, surface level of introduction in the talk. And, but I hope uh, I uh, motivate you enough to take a look at more details in our paper. And finally, uh, I want to tell you that uh, this is probably just the beginning of the study of uh, content, like MCSP in a quantum setting. And there are lots of interesting future direction to explore. So first, maybe because we, uh, for the basic complexity result, we didn't push too hard. Yeah, our upper bound is more, mostly focused on the quantum part, but it could be the case that there's, there could be some interesting classical upper bound. For example, it could be the case that uh, we can put some of the, our special setting of the quantum version of NCSP in NP. And uh, another interesting, uh, a question along this line is like uh, how to handle super linear number of NC last qubits. I briefly mentioned about the difficulty uh, earlier. 
And in our opinion, it is quite uh, puzzling and interesting to think about like, oh, if super linear, like a number of NCR qubit actually can be handled similarly as like a like linearly uh, number of uh, NCR qubits. And uh, also another interesting future directions is to find applications of the quantum unique uh, reductions. And uh, also like uh, for uh, Oh yes, and also uh, like uh, the in the in the previous slides when we talk about quantum unique reduction, we all talk about like either the state version or the unitary version, but for the Boolean function version, the MQCSP, actually we don't yet know uh, is there are there any like search decision reduction or self reduction, and uh, it could be a case there is because uh, the quantum circuit is still reversible, but the difficulty is like a. Uh, the when we do the similar like guess and verify uh, task, it might destroy the Boolean structure uh, of the circuits because if you remember when we define MQCSP, uh, we like use the first bit like a uh, marginal probability to determine the the out outcome. But if you like keep doing our like um, uh, the guess guess and reverse uh, trick. It actually might disturb like a like a mess up the, the structure and it's unclear like a, a direct uh, like applications of the idea will work or not but it also uh, could be the case that with uh, some more ideas you can actually make the search to decision reduction work and next uh, like uh, can we uh, build on more connection to other stuff in uh, cryptography of other areas and uh, also uh, maybe even more connections to some, some interesting uh, like area in the study of common complexity or beyond. Yeah, so I think, uh, I hope like uh, in, in this, uh, in this uh, talk and our paper, I can convince you that uh, there could be some interesting future connections between like uh, meta complexity, which here we use MCSP as a starting point and quantum computation and quantum complexity. So thank you for your attention. And I hope uh, if you have questions, feel free to uh, talk to us offline or send us an email. Thank you.